Yeah. All right. It's good to see so, you. I mean, you were the first um, the first person to uh, talk about us, the first person to interview us, the first person to sort of, you know, show some interest. Um, I think when we talked, it was before we had launched the ISPO. Exactly. So we, so we were super early stages. Yeah, you were so, about as early as they get. Yeah. So, so I'm excited. Um, very excited to have you back on uh, August podcast and just to kind of see, uh, you know, every, all my subscribers and everyone that watches uh, my channel to kind of know who you guys are, what you're doing. And I'm, mm -hmm. uh, you know, build the excitement up because I'm super excited about this project. <laughs> I'll, I'll be I'll be uh, I'll be honest with you. Um, just with all the products that are out there, hmm. this one really, really catches my eye, especially that. with the interest rates that you guys are planning on having yeah. based on what I'm seeing. So, um, yeah. So yeah. since we talked, um, we launched the ISPO on uh, the 1st of July and um, we've upgraded our website and our sort of got all of that stuff in order. When we launched the ISPO, um, on the first day, we were expecting to get, um, you know, maybe a, a million in delegation. Um, and so as a result of that, I was working very late on the first night and yeah. I was making graphics for Twitter saying like, you know, 1 million delegated, 2 million delegated, 3 million delegated, 4 million, this kind of thing, right? And um, by the end of the first sort of normal working day, I think we were at 10 million. And so it was, <laughs> yeah, insane, it was right? really, really shocking for us. Um, and so then uh, it was somewhere around midnight, I got a call from our head of social media and he said, okay, I need one for 10 million, 11 million, 15 million and 20 million. And so I was doing that. And then he sent me a message at around one o'clock in the morning saying, don't bother. And so somebody had delegated like 31 million in one go. So by the end of the first 24 hours, we had collected more than 100 million ADA in delegations. So wow. it sort of outstripped all of our expectations. We were super happy that, you know, the community was that engaged and was, you know, that enthusiastic about both what we were doing and the way that we were doing it. So we were just very, you know, happy and humble and, and really sort of, it really fired us up a lot. Um, and so it's just gone really well since then. So we're now a month in, we're at, uh, as of today, we're at 260 something million delegated. Um, the ISPO is going extremely well. Um, we're... People are contacting us on a regular basis about what an ISPO is and how it works and whether their project can do it and what are some of the pitfalls related to it and, you know, all of this kind of stuff. And so we're, we're helping out these projects and giving them some insights and, you know, talking to them about, you know, the mistakes that we've made and, you know, how, how to do it in a good way. Um, in addition to that, in regards to the actual protocol, uh, it's going very, very well. Uh, we're in heavy development now. We've started the development of the mobile app. So in the next okay. couple of weeks, we'll have the first um, sort of animations or not animations, but screen captures of the mobile app. Um, and we'll be releasing it pretty soon or the first version pretty soon. Um, we have also um, announced a piece of software for the Cardano ecosystem. It's called Hachi. And it is a, a security auditing set of tools to be able to allow developers to do both auditing and bug fixing or bug checking and reverse engineering for smart contracts on Cardano. Yes. So we're working very closely in the ecosystem to try to produce tools that make Cardano easier to use, easier to work with and safer. So that's been a, a big announcement as well. And then obviously the biggest announcement is uh, we have partnered up with a launch pad called Vent okay. and we are building a bridge between 
Ethereum and Cardano on the Polygon network. So we're building a Polygon ADA bridge wow. called Adamatic so that we can transfer back and forth ADA and Ethereum and yeah. Uh, so that's going to add even more utility. Right, exactly. Right. And that, that the bridge, which is called Adamatic, it's not part of MELD. Mm -hmm. It is part of, we want it to be part of the community. So it has its own identity. It's not the MELD bridge or anything like that. It's not the Vent bridge. We're working with Vent in collaboration and we'll work with other partners. And we want this to be a generic bridge mm -hmm. across for anybody in the ecosystem to use. So things are sort of picking up and you know we're we're announcing new partnerships and we're working with more people in the in the space and the ecosystem. And so it's just generally starting to it's starting to roll. It's starting to really kind of move forward. Well, I like how you're building uh, tools and uh, building different aspects for the actual community aspect to, to get more people into crypto to make it easier to use for everybody, less fees, and not just for the melt specifically, but for the whole community, which is great. Cause, yeah. Because we need more adoption in the crypto community, right? That and, and, you know, with regards to security to make sure that there's enough tools out there um, so that the smart contracts meet the expectation that the market has for us. There's a big, very high expectation now for the launch of smart contracts on Cardano. And it's important that there are tools out there available for all developers to be able to really kind of dive into those smart contracts and minimize risk exposure. Because what we don't want is we don't want a situation where, you know, it launches and then there's a whole bunch of, of uh, sort of gaps in the smart contracts or problems with the smart contracts, which would then tarnish the reputation of the whole blockchain. And so we are trying to, we're not doing this, we're doing this in collaboration. We're working with other people in the space to do this, uh, but we're building some of the tools that can help the space um, do a better job and really help out with regards to the security side. Awesome, so we have the, um, and you guys were pretty much, you guys were the first to develop the, uh, the ISPO. Yes, so we didn't come up with the concept. <laughs> But, <laughs> but we were the first, uh, some people would say the dumbest, but we were the first <laughs> to, to actually execute on it, to actually go out and do an ISPO and, and believe that it's a good idea and yeah. believe that it's a good enough good idea to actually go and, and engage the community on it. And we've gotten some negative feedback. Um, so there's a lot of uh, stake pool operators that really got quite upset that we did this because um, people undelegated from their stake pools it and took, delegated it took some from the, of the market. Yeah, yeah, it took some of the market. And so that was, that was never the intention uh, and it's unfortunate, but um, you know, we just had to, to live with uh, the negative criticism. But I think most of it has died down now because people understand that we're not a, we're not a scam and we're not sort of going to run away with it. And, you know, we're here to stay, we're contributing to the community. Uh, we we have no ill intentions towards stake pool operators. The opposite, we understand that they're sort of at the core of the of the blockchain. So we're working with a lot of stake pool operators as well. Um, but it sort of comes with the territory. I think when you do something very new, then there's always going to be a um, one camp of criticism involved, and you just have to you know, stay professional and, and try to answer the questions as best you can and move forward. Yeah, what, what I love about the project is how transparent uh, the team is and everything that's going on, everything you're developing. Mm -hmm. Obviously can't give away everything. Um, <laughs> but Not uh, yet. I mean, we will, it'll all be open sourced, uh, yeah. but we'll open source more and more as we get closer to the deadline. Exactly. And looking at the deadlines and kind of the... Um, what you're looking for on the map there for the for the roadmap yeah so we're still on track we're still on track for november so the launch date is still set for november um some of the functionality obviously will be predicated on the alonzo hard fork and how far the the alonzo development comes um so obviously everybody is kind of waiting with bated breath for smart contracts on cardano um and then the ISPO ends on December 8th. 
So those are the sort of two um, dates that we know that are kind of set in stone. And thus far, we're still on track to be able to hit both of those. Perfect. So there'll be a kind of a, a point where there's launch and then there's still the stake pool. Um, yeah. So continuing. this is a question we get from a lot of people. Um, so when we mint the tokens, you know, when Alonzo hard fork happens and we can okay. mint the tokens, um, we will mint all of the meld tokens. So it's a single Genesis event. And then all of the rewards that have been accumulated to that point on the ISPO will be distributed. And then from that point, at the end of each epoch, we will airdrop whatever rewards are allocated for that specific epoch. And then at the very end of the ISPO, we will airdrop the sort of bonus rewards. So we have a bonus reward program where if you've been staking from the beginning, then you get an additional 25%. Nice. If you've been staking, I think now we're in the second tier. Um, and in the second tier, I think you get a bonus of 15%. Um, and so then as you get closer to the deadline, then the percentages get less. So we're trying to trying to really kind of um, benefit, make sure that the people that have been there from day one, like you, uh, are benefiting the most from it. Yeah, I've been considering getting more um, ADA just to uh, be able to stake more. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a question that we, we've yeah. been looking at. There yeah. was a guy who did some data science on our ISPO, and yeah. he found that 40% of the ADA staked in our ISPO um, came from newly created wallets. Okay. So we don't know if those wallets were created for the ISPO or whether they were created to buy ADA. Uh, so we're very curious as to how many, how many participants in the ISPO actually bought ADA to participate in the ISPO. That would be a very interesting number to find. Well, I think if people find, uh, you know, the meld, meld product and the project exciting, then, and if they're not an ADA holder, that can, that's definitely the reason to get some. Yeah, um, yeah. So that could be definitely big for the ecosystem, I think. Oh, we've uh, heard this from people. We've, I know we've I got more ADA myself. You did? Just to, okay. Just to be able to be involved, so. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Um, now, I want to ask you, um, now, not everybody that watches this podcast is going to know exactly um, every detail about the project. Sure. Um, so I want to ask you about, uh, first, the, the partner program. Mm -hmm. what, what's that going to entitle? And then just a breakdown of uh, overall what Melt does, just so, uh, yeah. give so an update. I'll go, I'll go through the, the what Melt does first, and then we can go into the yeah. partner program. Um, so Meld is essentially creating a banking stack on Cardano. What that means is we're creating lending and borrowing functionality that makes it possible for users to be able to use their existing crypto, lock it up into a smart contract, still own their crypto, still own their keys, and they can borrow against that, and they can either borrow more crypto, uh, like you do in Aave Comp, or you can borrow fiat. So the big sort of, the big key characteristic is that we allow you to lock up your crypto and borrow fiat against that crypto. And how we're different than somebody like uh, BlockFi or a Nexo or a Celsius is that we are non-custodial. In other words, we don't require you to transfer your assets to us so that we are in control of them. We are putting your assets into a smart contract in the same way that a lot of different protocols do on, on Ethereum um, in a non-custodial and decentralized manner. So you still own your, your crypto. There's no way for us to do anything with it, you know, take it from you or anything like that. Um, and then you can still borrow fiat. And so the big benefits there are one, you're able to keep your crypto. So if that crypto goes up in value, then you'll see that value. And the second is if you don't sell your crypto, then you're not paying capital gains tax, right? So you can, you can push the capital gains tax event into the future. Um, and so you'll get some of the value from that crypto without having to pay a tax event. And then finally, when you do that, you have to pay interest on it, but the interest that you're paying on it is tax deductible in most countries. So whatever income you're getting on a normal basis, you can actually deduct the interest that you're paying on that loan. 
Um, so sort of debt financing is a, is a common thing in most Western countries, most Western economies. And so it really has a lot of upsides to it. You get to keep the future potential of your crypto, see some of the value and not pay a tax event. And so it just, it just generally makes sense uh, on many, many levels. I'm way too excited about that aspect. Uh, <laughs> zero interest loans. Uh, it's, just, it's just funny because I look at my crypto wallet and then I look at my bank account. I'm like, <laughs> I mean, that's if anyone was to see only my bank, bank account, they're like, this guy is so broke. <laughs> It's a this problem, is where it right? comes from, you know. I had, I have, I have friends that are very successful crypto investors, but they have no fiat. They have no. They're sort of, they're crypto rich and fiat poor, and it's not a. <coughs> excuse me. It's not a way to sort of. It's not. It's not avoiding paying taxes or anything like that. It's just pro. It's it's pushing those tax events down the road a bit farther. Um, and you know this is these are the mechanics that are used by corporations all over the world you know debt financing is a common mechanic all we're doing is we're making it transparent making it decentralized and making it available to everybody and so this is there's there's a lot of really really useful upsides to this for everybody in the crypto space who are our customers people ask anybody who owns crypto is a customer. I mean, if you think about it, it doesn't matter because Cardano, the fees on Cardano are so low. It doesn't matter whether you have, you know, $500,000 in Ethereum or whether you have, you know, 0.2 or 0.1 Bitcoin, because if you lock up that small Bitcoin and you're only going to borrow, let's say, you know, $2,000 or something like that, you still are able to keep that Bitcoin that you know is going to continue to go up. You know, if you have only 0.2 Bitcoin, let's say you live in South America somewhere, you don't want to sell it. You understand, you know the fact that you know Bitcoin will be going up in value. And so you see that as a future. And if you can borrow against it get to get some of the value now, then you're able to live your life today and still have this, this future potential growth, um, even if it's a small amount. And so this is one of the reasons why we chose Cardano is because the capital efficiency of Cardano means that we can offer these things to countries that, or to people that, you know, they wouldn't otherwise be able to have, get access to it. You know, if you, if you only have, let's say a thousand dollars in Bitcoin going on to Ethereum and paying $60 for a transaction on Ethereum is a big deal. That's very, very expensive. And so Cardano yeah. really provides us with that level of capital efficiency. Yeah, that's definitely. And uh, let's just say someone was to have, this is approximate, but someone was to have $100,000 worth of, you know, Bitcoin mm -hmm. and then want to utilize it to take out a loan. What kind of numbers could they be seeing when it comes to, to the loan? So we have a we have a couple of different loan types which yeah. we haven't talked about uh, since before. Yeah. So the first one, um, you can lock up your Bitcoin and you can borrow up to fifty percent of its value. Yeah. So we're not in the business of doing risky loans. We're in the business of doing very safe loans. Our interest, our goal, is not to take your Bitcoin. Our goal is to help you get some of that value and take the do dollar. There are some protocols out there that'll do, you know, 70%, 80%, 90%, but then that's exposing you to a yeah. very, very high degree of risk. Um, and if the market moves even a little bit, then you could be liquidated like that and you lose all of your Bitcoin. So that's not of any interest to us. It's not in our, our DNA. Um, we do have other loans that have different mechanics though. So for example, if you have ADA, then you can take advantage of a very special loan we have where you can lock up your ADA and then you're able to borrow up to 90% of the value of that ADA in stablecoin, in the MELD stablecoin, MUSD. Um, mm -hmm. But it's a negative 1% interest loan. Okay. So we actually pay you to borrow money from us. And so there's a lot of different, it's really, <laughs> okay. it's really, okay. it's nice to, to talk about these things. It's nice to explain these things to people 
because they have this kind of reaction. You know, they're going, they're sitting there going through their head and they're thinking, this is too good to be true. Usually when it's too good to be true, it does sound too good true. to be true. Of course it does. Rates, it does. Of, it does. In the world that you put your money in the bank and you get 0% interest and you're hoping to get a, a point something or a 1% yeah. where you're getting, you're basically getting paid to. Yeah. And so, so the, the way that this, the way to understand it is to take a step back. And when you look at how the mechanics of a loan, so what you do is you put up collateral and that collateral is then taken from you and is used to make more money, right? They and so put in a, if they put it to work and you'll get anywhere from like four or 5% up to 30% return on that value. And what would happen in a traditional market or what has happened in the market is all of that value, all of that return is kept by the bank, all of it. And then on top of that, they're going to charge you interest. And then they keep that as well. And so we just took a step back and said, you know, we're working on the blockchain. Everything is open and visible and transparent. We don't have to be super greedy. It doesn't make a lot of sense. We're trying to build an ecosystem. So if we're going to take that collateral and we're going to make it work, why not just give a little bit of it back to the person who's given us the collateral, right? So yeah. it's just a... Um, it just seems to be a more, a more balanced way of, of doing it. So it's not magic and there's no sort of, you know, there's no sort of mystical things in the background. It's a very, very simple. It's like all loans, you know, all loans operate this way. It's just, we're just deciding that, you know, some of the money that we're making on that collateral goes back to the person. And so that's the, that's the, that's the sort of long and the short of, of how that kind of loan works. Um, and we think it's a good idea. We think that, you know, we have the potential, we'll still make money, the protocol will still make money. But having this balance, because we have two customers, right? We have the borrower, and we have yeah. the lender. And the lender needs to make money. But the borrower also needs to see the value proposition. And if we can split that up in a more even balance, so that everybody makes money, then it's just going to create a more healthy ecosystem for all people to participate. Well, I love that win-win scenario for the lender as well as the borrower. It's, it's the complete opposite of what's going on with the banks because the banks take your money and then they're, they're winning the whole time. I mean, it's a, it's <laughs> a, it's a very complex, it's a very complex yeah. sort of yeah. set of issues. There are lots of yeah. actors involved in the case yeah. of, of, of what we're doing. There are very few actors involved. We're going directly to the customer. We don't have lots yeah. of middlemen. Um, so it all, it also on the bank side, it also has a lot to do with a lack of capital efficiency because there are so many players in between, Different it becomes layers. less and less. Yeah, exactly. And so because we have this transparency and we're going direct, we have this freedom to have the capital efficiency and that capital efficiency that then can yield to everybody. And, you know, this is the same thing that we want to do with, with the banks, right? So the protocol connects to bank accounts. And when the bank account is connected to it, then that bank account, which is essentially the liquidity provider, can earn yield or earn interest, okay. both. Um, so we're working with banks to make it possible for them to also earn yield and earn interest off of this process. So they are, okay. a, they are an actor in this situation just as a borrower is and just as a crypto liquidity provider is. So they are one actor and they get to benefit in the same way that the borrower and the lenders also benefit. So we're treating them equally. That's good. Yeah. Especially when it comes to, you're going to need the, we're going to need the banks to be able to utilize the fiat. Loans, yeah, absolutely. Right? So, so absolutely. Working in conjunction. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. We're not, we're not hostile towards banks at all. All we're saying is that we have the freedom to, change the way that lending has been seen in the past or has been used in the past and we're taking the responsibility to the responsibility that we have for doing it and we're trying to do it in a better way awesome yeah, yeah so to your point of of the partners program so the partners program is currently underway uh we'll have a couple of announcements in the, in the coming weeks in reference to the partners program um, in addition to that, we have a um, ambassadors program. 
So you can okay. sign up uh, on the on our website in the ambassadors program. And the ambassadors program covers a handful of different types of people, everything from content creators to translators to writers to community managers um, to sort of help um, reach out to the community and see if we can build better connections and actually work more closely with the community on a, on a very kind of structured structured basis. But uh, partnerships are becoming more interesting because we're both reaching out to more partners and part and people are reaching out to us. And so we're seeing more connections in the community that we can, we can bring something to the table because we have lending and borrowing and we have wrapped assets. And then we can also connect to other protocols that do other types of things. You things like, you know, decks and wallets and, and other lending, excuse me, other lending protocols. Awesome. So a lot of excitement between, between now and, um, 2022 right yeah it's gonna be a big big bang to the to the end of this year um what do you just wonder your personal uh, your uh, your opinion on this what do you feel about the crypto space right now um do you think <laughs> do you think we're um, gonna go sideways you, you you think uh we're gonna make another I have to start by this is not financial level? advice i no, guess not financial nobody advice. ever asked me this <laughs> yeah um um Personally, I believe that we're going to go back up. I believe that we're sort of in a lull. Most of the technical analysts that I know uh, and the people in sort of the economic space around crypto believe that this is kind of a mini bear, you know, small down, whatever you want to call it. Um, and we're going to go back up and we're going to see at least some degree of the uh, of the sort of continuation or the the completion of the of the bull run that we saw in the end of 2020 and beginning of 2021 um it might just be optimism but my belief is that there's still so much energy in the space there's so much enthusiasm in the space i don't believe that we've kind of used all of that up um we didn't get this kind of massive gigantic parabolic move uh that we saw in the previous bull market and so i think that there's and there's a lot of other technical sort of analysis around it but i think that we're going to see a, a a slow and slowly uh more it'll be building much more regularly uh over the coming months and definitely. we'll see something you know towards the end of the year and this is definitely not financial advice by the way everyone watching and in my opinion, I, I feel not financial based. Um, I feel that uh, I think we're going to have a second run up. Um, I think we're going to kind of kind of slowly move upwards. We're going to have some ups, a little bit of downs, ups. I don't think we're going to go significantly low again. I think we're just going to keep climbing and potentially reach all new all time highs. But I could definitely be wrong for sure as well. Mm -hmm. So definitely awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm excited for everything that's happening. Um, and uh, in the in the space, I'm excited what's happening with Mel. And uh, so, if anyone wants to learn more about the Ambassador Program, mm -hmm. um, as well as um, the upcoming partnerships and everything, what where is the best place for them to go? Just go to Mel.com. Go to the website. From there, you can go to any of the social media pages. We have uh, lots of Telegram groups in multiple languages. Um, we have Discord, we have Instagram, we have Twitter. So we're covering all of the those areas. You can also, if you want more details, you can go under docs. So we have docs at mel.com where you can find out more sort of written information. And of course, you can download the white paper from our website and you can get access to that and sort of read through more of the details. Yeah, and if anyone wants to learn how to um, actually utilize uh, the Cardano wallets, and um, to be part of the uh, the ISPO and 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 gain some uh, <laughs> definitely gain some uh, meld yeah yeah gain some meld and definitely meld uh, rewards you can find uh, some videos on um, on your YouTube channel as well right yeah YouTube yeah. channel has videos we have tutorials in the docs section as well yeah. and if you're running into any issues you can just jump onto the Telegram or the Discord yeah. chat and ask a question and the community yeah. is great they help out tremendously. So you'll get your answer real quick. Yeah, and day of launch, day of launch, um, I set up the wallet, I moved the, the ADA, and then um, 
I started right away. So it was all done within definitely within an hour. So it yeah, it's a pretty, it's a pretty, it's a pretty painless process. Yeah. And uh, it's cool to see your rewards uh, growing as well. Absolutely. Um, so definitely. Um, and yeah, so I, th I think we went over quite a bit. Um, anything um, people should be excited about in the, you know, the upcoming uh, weeks, uh, month I mean, that stands out? We have a couple of, of announcements that are going to be really exciting coming up very soon. I can't talk about them yet, but I mean, the big okay. one is the Cardano Polygon Bridge, Adamatic. We're super excited about that. It means we're going to have lots of liquidity coming across the bridge from the Ethereum ecosystem into Cardano and also from Cardano into the Ethereum ecosystem. So it just brings everything a bit closer together and makes us one step closer to this idea of a more general community as opposed to these kind of maximalist perspectives. Awesome. Well, I'm super excited about the project. So I really appreciate you uh, jumping back on the podcast, Ken. Yeah, anytime, uh, Dave. And once again, guys, uh, this is uh, this is the chairman of Meld. So keep your eyes open for all the content that's coming out. Uh, definitely yep. join the Telegram group as well. It's super exciting in there. Always uh, a lot of team members speaking in there, giving you guys the latest updates. And um, I'll include all the social media links um, down below. And the best website would be uh, meld.com, correct? Correct. Yeah, that's it. Awesome. awesome. Well, I'm sure we'll be in touch soon. Yeah, uh, definitely. Continue. And uh, yeah, I appreciate you jumping on and uh, we'll be speaking soon. Thanks. I'll talk to you later. Thanks for having me. See ya. Okay.